One of the secrets to how we transformed this barren sand lot into a thriving food forest that produces year-round food and medicine in just four years on a very tight budget are with these. In this video, I'll share with you all the tips and tricks we've discovered to harness the magical power of composting worms and the three simple ways we use our worms to create an endless supply of free, super bioavailable nutrients that help our plants grow and produce like crazy, even if you're starting with soil as poor as ours was. I think the reason I get really passionate about this subject is because it fills me with so much hope to realize that currently, right as we speak, trillions of worms and fungi are actively contributing to saving the world, and we can magnify their power by learning how to collaborate with these natural forces. You probably already know about my obsession with wood chips and mycelium. It's a big part of how we heal this land, and I'll talk about that in another video. But today, let's just focus on the incredible power of worms. If you dream of a world full of flowers and nourishing food growing all around you, then you need a plan for giving back to the soil that makes it all possible. Synthetic fertilizers can be harmful to the environment, and who wants to purchase bags of organic fertilizer year after year after year? What you can do instead is get yourself some red wigglers and have them turn your food scraps and yard waste into the best fertilizer for your garden. Creating a vermicompost system or worm bin is actually pretty easy. You need just four things. You need a container, you need bedding, you need worms, and your food scraps. First, let's talk about the container. We use this old cast iron bathtub, but any shallow container will do, like a plastic tub or a half wine barrel. You wanna make sure you can put a lid over it, it can get air in it, oh, and you keep critters out. If you live in a really cold area or don't have outdoor space, you can purchase or build your own indoor system. There are hundreds of designs and products to purchase online. The great thing about a healthy vermicompost system is they don't smell bad. If they do, it's a sign you're either feeding your worms too much or the bin has become anaerobic and needs more oxygen and fresh bedding. It's also important not to let your bin get too wet. You need air holes and a way for it to drain. We plugged our drain because a possum got in and then after a heavy rain, it flooded, which was really traumatic for our worms. Okay, let's talk about bedding. This is a substrate that the worms live in because worms can't just live in rotten food and poo. And as you might guess, we use wood chips because we love them, they're free, they're abundant. But you can also use shredded newspaper or cardboard, generally staying away from ink, composted manure, coconut core, paper bag, shredded leaves. Just make sure to spray your bedding down so it's as moist as a wrung out sponge. We then sprinkle in about a shovel full of our native soil, which is sandy, because sand provides grit for the worm's gizzard, aiding in the mechanical breakdown of the food particles. This helps the worms digest organic matter more effectively. Once you have your worm bin set up, it's time to add your worms. It's important that you don't use just any old worms. You want red wigglers or Icenia fetida. These are composting worms that have been bred to be very hardy and effective for transforming food scraps into garden gold. I included a link in the description where you can purchase them, but even better if you just reach out to your community and see if someone else has a vermicompost system and can share a cup of worms with you. You don't need that many worms to get going as they have the ability to double in population every two months if you keep them happy. Next, we collect all our food scraps and add them to the bin. Now, observation and intuition are really important here. If you treat your vermicompost system like a garbage bin and just toss stuff in there, you probably won't get great results. Instead, if you tap into your inner child and poke around to see what's going on in there, you'll gain a deeper understanding of this force and how you can use it to create magic in your garden. And yes, I know, it's a little gross. Roberto and I used to just dump the food scraps in here all willy-nilly. The problem with that is when you harvest your worm castings, it'll have worms in it too, and you want to keep it separate. So now we treat it kind of like a three-bin combo system. We just harvest it from this side and replace it with fresh bedding. This is our active side where we add food scraps to. This is where the majority of the worms are. Then this side over here is where we're actively harvesting. So we use the food scraps to move the worms. We have them here. We'll eventually start moving them over here as they follow the food scraps, and then we'll move them back to the other side, going around and around, so that we always have a place to harvest, a place to add to, and a place that's ready for the next season. 
In about six weeks or so, you may notice that all the bedding and food scraps have turned dark, and that means they've been converted into a mixture of castings and composted organic matter. Now it's time to harvest and put all this super bioavailable plant nutrition on your plants. There are three ways we use our vermicompost at Goldie Farms. As a top dressing in early spring, we add it around the drip line, water it in, then cover it in mulch. Secondly, we add vermicompost to our soil as an amendment when we plant. It's important to note that this is powerful stuff and a little goes a long way. According to Mary Applehoff, when worm castings were added to soil in as little as 5% of the mixture, the plants showed a significant increase in vitality. But according to a meta-analysis published in 2019, the positive effect of vermicompost on plant growth reached a maximum when the vermicompost represented 30 to 50% of the soil volume. We add vermicompost along with our regular compost and work it into our soil when planting, but my favorite way to use it is as worm tea. Briefly, I want to let you know that this video was made possible by our Etsy shop, where we bottle the goodness of Goldie Farms and send it in eco-friendly packaging so you can experience the magic of Goldie Farms firsthand. A link is in the description. All summer long, we like to brew worm tea to feed our plants, and here's how we do it. First, we mound up the vermicompost on the finished side and leave the lid off for about 15 minutes or so. The light from the sun will send any remaining worms out of this pile. Next, we fill up a five gallon bucket of water. If you're on city water like us, you may wanna fill your buckets first and leave them out overnight so that the chemicals have a chance to off gas. We then add a scoop of castings per five gallons and place the castings directly in the bucket. Then we add a pinch of sugar. This gives all the beneficial bacteria you're brewing something to feed on. We then drop in our little bubble stone, which is attached to an aquarium pump. It's important to add air to the water because you want to grow aerobic bacteria. Allow the mixture to brew for 24 to 48 hours. During this time, the air pump will aerate the mixture, promoting the growth of beneficial microorganisms. I captured this microscopic footage during my permaculture design course, where we learned how specific organisms can be bred by formulating your worm tea brew to address particular issues in the garden. But we're not quite this advanced here at Goldie Farms just yet. Then I use my wand to vortex the worm tea. This restructures the water similar to what nature does when water goes through rivers and waterfalls. I go clockwise, then counterclockwise to create these spirals that you see in nature. We used to dilute our mixture, but now we just pour it directly on the plants and then water it in thoroughly, which essentially dilutes the tea and helps the tea deeply saturate around the plant's roots. If the leaves of our plants show any signs of pests or disease, we fill this little sprayer with worm tea, which attaches directly to the garden hose and dilutes the tea, and then we spray the leaves directly. You just don't spray anything you plan on consuming unless you wash it very thoroughly. In the very near future, we'll be scaling up to these 55 gallon drums, which will gravity feed from the top of the property to make this easier and faster. But for now, five gallon buckets have worked very well for us. That's pretty much it. Now I filmed this video in February, so the garden is mostly dormant here, but I can't wait to show you how this warm tea and rain transforms the garden this spring. <laughs>